from Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. This is your game now, gentlemen. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. And, uh, things are bad. They are really bad. As we heard, uh, at least one caller in the last hour let us know that uh, things are horrible for him. And uh, we do like to take your polls. And, uh, I'm just amazed that people think we, that uh, not the majority of people, obviously, because the ratings we have for this show are the highest they've been in over six months. And um, I know that uh, by talking about uh, the issues that people really care about, and, uh, well, yeah, you're doing a public service, but of course you also, you also are doing your job, which is to get the most number of people to listen in. It's my gig. I'm in the, uh, I'm in the ears business. I need as many of them as I can get. And people want to hear, uh, other people talking about the issues they really care about. It's the key to my business. So, uh, yes, I'd love to have happier things to talk about, but I have always talked about the things people talk about most. And that's what I'm doing here as I find out from you how bad things are out there at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. How bad are things? Josh on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hello, Father. How you doing, son? I've had better. I've had worse, man. That's for sure. Do tell. Uh, well, let's just put it this way. I'm so broke right now, I can't make my bankruptcy payment. It's coming up on my second month. What is a bankruptcy payment? <laughs> it's for those people who are so broke like me, they can't pay the lawyer one... It's a payment plan for a bankruptcy lawyer. So you can't afford to pay your bankruptcy lawyer? <laughs> nope. Now, what, what recourse? Now, I'm curious. Why would you want a job like that, bankruptcy lawyer? What recourse does your bankruptcy lawyer have if you don't pay him? Um, let's. If I don't pay him by the exit x amount of period of time, my payments are null and void, and he just keeps what I gave him. Uh, does he uh, take back your bankruptcy? Does he? Uh... No, I will start all over with being in just as bad a situation as I am then now, if not worse. I mean, that's the perfect escape for anybody. You get your <laughs> bankruptcy attorney to get you to file for bankruptcy. Then when he tries to collect, say, hey, I'm bankrupt. What do you want? <laughs> I wish it was that easy, my man. But you know what, Tom? Thank you for so much for staying in touch with the heart of the people, man. I appreciate it. And I was wondering if you could uh, blow me up Kobe style and then leave me out with an African uh, tribal chant. Yes. Yes, I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beast in my heart. Oh. The air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Raphael on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. You got to change the subject, man. You got to do it. Well, this most people say I shouldn't change the subject. Well, I don't know because you know, like I'm constantly being reminded here at my job that we're going to get laid off. So I figure me and a couple of my coworkers, well, let's go back to the shack and listen listen to Tom Likas. He'll pump our spirits up. Then you, we, we listen to you, and you have a guy crying. You got this pussy over there crying. And like, now my friends are all depressed, too. I'm like, come on, our father will bring us back up. All right, well, coming up in an hour, we'll have Like Us 101, and then we will completely have changed the topic. Can you take me out with a bong whip and a Snoop Dogg stuff? Yes. Here you go. Beach. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Eric on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm okay. Long time, first time. You know, I, I typically sit back and listen to what you have to say, and uh, and today, I feel like I, I needed to chime in a little bit. 
Um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm on neutral ground here. I, I agree with both sides. This is definitely a depressing topic. I agree with you for for bringing, uh, shedding some light on it and talking about it every day. I understand it's a little bit depressing, and yeah, we're used to some entertainment from you. But uh, you know, when you got guys like calling up a second ago, you know, spilling his guts, crying on the air, you know, it's just a testament as to exactly how bad it is. I don't think a lot of these people out there really that and uh I'm, I'm in a similar situation I, i'm not quite living out of the back of my car yet but you know i'm, I'm 29 years old i uh I, i'm at the age of 23 had a steady job i bought my first property in arizona not to flip or anything like that i lived in it when i lived out there uh moved out to california about four years ago and uh I, you know i prided myself on the fact that i haven't had to work for anybody else in about four and a half years i had a small graphic design business and i'm also in the entertainment industry and uh here it is 2009 29 years old i now have a vacant place in arizona that i can't get rented uh so i'm making a mortgage payment on top of rent which you know is not cheap out here and uh both of my industries, the entertainment industry, can't get its act together. And uh, in terms of graphic design, not a lot of people are spending money on anything right now either. And, uh, you know, the one thing I wanted to share with everybody, and especially this guy that called in, and, uh, you know, I'm a, I know I'm a little long-winded, but, uh, you know, the, the one light, light at the end of the tunnel, if you will, a uh, bright side to this whole thing, if there is one, is the fact that we're not in the – he's not in this alone. We're all kind of in this together. And, uh, you know, from a personal standpoint, I've taken initiative and talked to my landlords and said, you know what, I don't want to walk out on a lease. I need you to work with me. Uh, you know, I'm talking to my creditors and doing the same thing. And people are, are definitely willing to work with you these days. So, you know, I just want to let this guy know that uh, this, this story of him living in the back of a van someday is going to be a great story to tell his grandkids if he has any, but, uh, you know, to keep his head up and realize that he's not the only one out there, man. There's, there's ways of getting out of this. Eric, thank you for that. I appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's the telephone number. Bill, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? First I'm time, okay. long time. Thank you, Bill. Hey, uh, Tom, I'm your age. I'm one of those guys that uh, played by the book, never got married, no kids, started my business 27 years ago. I've worked over 100 hours a week to the bone, like you can't believe, I've become a millionaire. Right now, I am shaking in my f boots. Just literally. Why? No, none of my customers are paying me. What kind of business are you in? I, I'm in the fabricating. I fabricate uh, plastic. And I've had customers for many, many years. All of them are in trouble. And it's a scorched earth type of way of paying people. They are covering their own rear ends, and it is just the worst I have ever seen. Wow. I, I, I've never missed a payment on a mortgage. I own my industrial building. I own a residence. I actually literally have made an offer recently on a house in 90210. And um, now I'm almost scared that... They might accept my offer. Wow. Well, you can always get out on contingencies. You know that. I know. The inspector can come in and say he smells a rat, and that's it. That's right. But, uh, you know, I, I eat at all the same restaurants you do, Tom. I have a beautiful girlfriend that is just, you know, for my age, she she's a 10 by far. I walk down the street in Beverly Hills. Other guys literally turn their head and, and walk into light poles. My pole, she's so beautiful. That's because I, I follow almost all the things that you say. Work hard, never got married, never had those dumb kids, paid all my bills on time, never was late on a mortgage bill, never. And because of the rest of the earth is irresponsible, I'm the one now. I'm the one who worked over 100 hours a week for 27 years. I'm the one now that's getting it. There's a lot of people in that boat, people who played by the rules. By the way, people like you and me both played by the rules. And uh, now, look, as taxpayer, uh, we have to uh, cover the asses of people who were irresponsible. You don't know. You, you do know. 
what I pay in taxes is unbelievable. Sure. Uh, believe me, I, <laughs> I can support several families on what I paid in taxes in 2008 alone. That's right. And uh, so all these people out there having kids left and right, I'm working an extra 50 hours a week for you guys. I hope you all like it. Because when I go bankrupt, I ain't going to laugh. I ain't going to cry. I ain't going to worry about it when you guys are out in the street. And there isn't hard workers like me paying your bills where you can sit at home and watch Oprah all day long. Do you really think that's a possibility that you'll go bankrupt? Well, I don't know. I'm going to have to possibly start selling assets. I mean, I've got uh, a certain amount of time where the crap will hit the fan, you know. i got an overhead, a nut to turn every month that most people couldn't even conceive of. The average person couldn't even pay my taxes, uh, couldn't even pay my monthly, my monthly nut with uh, their year salary, you know. Wow. So when things stop, you know, this all started maybe back in September. Everything was fine. And all of a sudden, the whole world came to an end. No one was paying their bills. I got one guy I'm suing for $90,000. We want to have to go through court. I've been, I've been in the court system for months. What they let these little rats do is unbelievable. And, and by the time I'm done going after his assets, he might not have one cent left over. This is uh, really outrageous, and uh, it's like I say, it uh, it justifies our talking about this on the air. Uh, I think a lot of people out there have no idea how bad it is and how bad it could get. 1-800-5800-TOM. Like is 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Now a shorter commercial breaks, fewer commercials, and lots and lots of phone calls about the things you care about at 1-800-5800-TOM. We're talking to you about how bad things are getting. Richard on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. This is Richard calling from Orange. Yes. How are you? Great. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on a couple callers that really uh, kind of offended me and a lot of couple other people I'm talking with and talked about that you were insinu insinuating that you and part of the media is actually fueling the fire as far as how bad things are. When I think you're actually doing a commendable job, you should be appraised on... And your whole premise has always been, as long as I've been listening to you, which has been a long time, has always been about you're a what-is guy, not a, not a could-have, would-have, and, and uh, how's it go, would-have, could-have, should-have. That doesn't mean anything to you. And then you talk about what is and what is reality is what's happening today in the marketplace, which is the banks are the credit super tight. You miss one, you're, you have one 30 day thing on your credit. All of a sudden you can go to penalty pricing. They can jack up your interest rates. This is unbelievable. And if you fall behind on your mortgage, you can't work out a payment plan. Generally, if you fall behind, they want two or three payments all at once, one lump sum or nothing. Uh, I know, and uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, I guess there are people who yet haven't been touched by this, haven't been affected by this, and they're the ones who call in and complain when I do a show like this. And, but but I, I know from the email we get, and I know from the recent ratings where we have gone to number one in men, number one in adults, 25 to 54 among talk radio, um, I know that uh, people are coming here for uh, comfort. They're coming here to hear their friends and neighbors talk about the problem. It's almost like a big group therapy session when we do these hours. Exactly. One other thing I'd like to comment that I'll let you go is you used to preach, you know, about six months of savings, and I don't know exactly when, maybe four or five months ago, you changed it to 12 months. I'm even thinking you should preach 18 to 24 months of savings to have a real good, solid nest egg in case we go, we, who knows? We're in unprecedented, unprecedented territory in our lifetimes. Who knows how long this is going to go bad for? Yeah. Well, one thing I want to say is it's time for people to stop talking about flipping houses. It's time for people to stop talking about buying homes or real estate as investments. I mean, buying a house is a terrible investment right now. Oh, absolutely. I totally agree with you. And, you know, people need a place to live, granted, but they don't need to have, you know, 
you, what I've seen happen is two. Some people have one home. They borrow money against that one to buy two other homes. Right. Now they've lost those other two homes. Now they're in danger of losing their principal res- residence, and they're going to be on the street. By the way, that doesn't mean I don't think people should buy a house to live in. But I think people need to recognize uh, you buy a house to live in, and that means you're going to stay there. Exactly. And, and so it doesn't matter whether the price of the house goes up or down. Because right, you're not going order. anywhere. Right. You can, re- you can, like my parents bought a house like 40 years ago. They're still in the same home, so they've, rid- they've ridden all these times, and their house has been paid for, for a number of years, and, they're- and they can weather these type of downturns in the economy. Good points all, Richard. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Jay on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing, sir? Great. Uh, right now, I am working on buying a home, or at least I thought I would buy a home. Uh, I have fairly good credit, and a year and a half ago, you told me to not to buy a house when there was 100% financing to save up for uh, a large down payment. And by by the way, let's start with that advice I gave you. Was it right? Oh, I couldn't uh, appreciate it more, especially now that house prices have dropped at least $100,000 since you told me that. And uh, look at mortgage rates as well. Uh, thousands of dollars in mortgage rates, or uh, thousands of dollars uh, a year in savings just in uh the amount of uh, interest as well. Just by waiting a year or two? Yes, sir. Right. Now, you had a question. My question was, uh, it's going to be a primary residence, and I'm going to buy a house under what I actually qualify for. Is it still a good idea to buy? And I feel fairly stable in my position uh, at work. Uh, is it a good time to well, again, stable in your position is very important, so make sure you do feel stable and that you have reason to feel stable. Also, are we, you're, you're talking about a house where you will live a minimum of five to ten years, is that right? Yes, sir. In a neighborhood that uh, you love, so you won't be able to say, oh, this is just my starter house, my starter condo, my starter townhouse. That's not the, the goal here, is it? No, I, uh, well, I've had over a year and a half to research exactly where I wanted to live, so I've had or, over two years of uh, research into it, so mm-hmm. it's exactly where I want to be. And you are prepared with about a 25% down payment, which is about what you're going to need right now. Uh, 20%. I'm over, uh, I'm over 700 with the credit score, and uh, I've been at my position long enough. And Have you pre-qualified for a mortgage? Yes, sir. All right, so uh, you know then that they want 20% down? Yes. Okay. Right. I, I already have full pre-qualification. Perfect. Uh, but the point is they told you how much down you're going to have to put. Yes. Okay. And you are prepared for the expenses of owning a house, which include property taxes, insurance, earthquake insurance, and uh, maintenance, of course. Well, now we lead to more questions. Uh, I was doing research on insurance. What do you think as far as having earthquake insurance in Los Angeles? I have earthquake insurance. I have a uh, you know hundred thousand dollar deductible, but uh, I have earthquake insurance because I am concerned. By the way, it's not that expensive. You have a hundred thousand dollar deductible, but if it costs you a million dollars to replace that house. Seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand a small price to pay to get six hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of house. Well, I'm not nearly in the tax bracket that you are. No, I understand that. But, I mean, uh, what, what what's the price of the house you're considering? Uh, three hundred thousand. All right. Well, maybe then you don't need earthquake insurance. Maybe uh, you can live without it. I still think if you can afford it, you should get it. But uh, all right, uh, well, you should at least price it out and, and make sure that you're eliminating it for the right reasons. Uh, but uh, anyway, so you, you understand all the expenses. Like you may buy a house and one hot, sunny summer could turn your roof into a sieve and it leaks. Now, could you afford $5,000 to replace a roof? Uh, well, I got a five-year warranty on the uh, house. So you have a particular house in mind? Yes, sir. All right. Well, the timing is fantastic. And uh, Is this a, a bank property? Is this a foreclosure? What is it? Uh, this is a short sale. Short sale. 
That well, you know, again, you're, you're answering all the questions correctly. Uh, it sounds like you're buying for the right reasons. It's your primary residence. You're not buying it with the intention of flipping it. You're not concerned about what kind of investment this is. Your plan is to live there. You love the neighborhood. And you can afford all the costs of owning a home. And you say your job is secure. Or, well, I, I mean, I feel fairly secure. And uh, it, I'm an electrical foreman, so, I mean, I'm in the construction field. Uh, I have, I feel like I have uh, backups as far as going to other companies that will take me on. But, I mean, work is slow, yet I don't believe it's slow enough where I will be out of work. Well, lots of people feel that way, so... Make sure you're right. In other words, you can never know for sure. Well, it's only getting worse, I guess. So. Right, because uh, we have not even hit the uh, bubble in commercial real estate uh, bursting. And that's uh, what I keep hearing. Many, right. many companies have long-term leases, and so you can't tell that what would happen when their lease runs out. And uh, some companies, when the lease runs out, will simply downsize further, um, leaving empty uh, office space and then the possibility that they won't need to build so many new buildings because there'll be so much vacant space. Well, it's hard to process, you know, all the financial information. You you know, you listen a little bit to CNN and, right. and then you turn over and you listen to Hannity for a while and, and you listen to Rush Limbaugh and, you know, everybody, you know, states that, you know, times are tough, but it's a matter of how bad are they, really. Well, uh, uh, and I do believe that rather than a, uh, a crash like we had in 1929, it's like a balloon or a, or a steel-belted radial that is slowly leaking air. You'll still get to the same place, but you, it's going to take you longer to get there. But um, I happen to believe, and I speak with, I'll just tell you my belief based on uh, what I'm doing. I don't believe we're going to just fall off a cliff. I believe this will stabilize at some point in the next year, and then um, it will start to plateau and then go the other direction. And um, I have continued investing in mutual funds during this whole time. And Warren Buffett, one of the richest men in the world, he has begun investing in stocks. So I believe that uh, it's bad. It's going to get worse. But then it's going to turn around at some point. Okay. I, uh, I believe that as well. I, I, like you said, it's not a crash of the original depression, but it's a, it is a downfall. Right. Uh, but uh, again, you know all the facts. You have the big down payment. And so I say, uh, if you feel confident enough in your job and you feel confident that you can afford the costs of uh, owning a home, this is probably the best time in your lifetime to buy a home. You'll never find a home that you... What area are we talking about? Uh, Palmdale. Palmdale. Uh, $300,000, you said? Yeah, well, I, that's why I've been researching for so long. I, and it's such a large house on you know, a fairly amount of property. And you can afford to commute? Do you uh, work near where you live? I do live. I, I will no longer be working in Los Angeles. I'll be working closer to uh, uh, Valencia, so fairly close, yeah. Sounds pretty good to me, Jay. Best of luck to you. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show, now heard six days a week. Don't forget our Saturday edition every Saturday, 2 to 6 p.m. 2 to 6 p.m. on 97.1 FM Talk here in Los Angeles. And, of course, if you can't hear our Saturday edition because you don't live in Southern California, you can always go to blowmeuptom.com. Click on the Listen Live button. It's blowmeuptom.com. In fact, if you're ever in a place where you cannot hear our show, don't forget blowmeuptom.com. That's how you do it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We're trying to find out how bad things really are out there. 
Rick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Oh, hi, Tom. Thanks hi. for taking my call. I'm a sure. first-time caller. Uh-huh. Anyway, um, I think people really do not know how bad things are. I'm living proof of that. I, From the outside, you'd never know anything, and I think everybody else is still living that way, and I, I hope and pray that you really push this message uh, and let people know how bad it is. I currently live in a house. I don't even know anymore, but it was about three million three hundred thousand dollars. I have I live in Orange County. I have horses on my property. I have celebrity neighbors. I have a Range Rover, the new Jag. I have the whole thing. Uh, I do real estate. I basically became a celebrity in that, uh, which plays the role of what I'm trying to talk about. I. I now my my job and my business has gone down to nothing. I went from making about a million four hundred, million two hundred a year to nothing. So you know it's hard on uh, many levels. It's tough uh, emotionally and uh, you know all the way around. I'm just wondering what do you advise. Where could people go that don't drink and you try to talk to people about it? And they kind of think you're somewhat of a big downer, and they don't even want to be around it. It's it's just something people don't like to just naturally talk about. Yeah, well, that's why that's why we do do? a show. That, by the way, that's why we do a show like this, because there are people like you who do want to talk about it. Uh, I have got to believe. I have nowhere to go. I have nowhere to talk to. I I'm one of those other ones that. I, I only owe two hundred thousand dollars on my home, but yet I have a barnkeeper who's eleven hundred dollars. I my gardener is five hundred and fifty dollars. My cars are paid for, so I'm not being kicked on out on the street. But my friends, my family, they're all so proud of me. And meanwhile, now I feel like I'm nothing. Well, and no one, no one's talking about that. So well, I'm, just, I'm going to talk to you about that right now because you can't define yourself by what you have. It's hard, Tom. It's hard. I know, but... Once you, once you have it, it's hard. I understand that it's hard to give it up. But they, they, this is these are two separate issues we're talking about. Giving it up is one thing. But defining yourself by what you have is something totally else. Now, people hear me on the radio all the time talking about being a multimillionaire, which is true. And I've discussed that a lot. But the reality is I've lived with a lot less than what I have today. I have a life that goes beyond my profession. Um, there are many things that I do with my weekends or my vacations. I don't even talk about on the radio simply because they are personal things that, that I do for myself. I'll talk about some of them. Um, I have uh, interests now in photography. I have interests in cooking. I have interests in uh, just spending time, quiet time thinking uh, I have friends who are not in my business. Many of them do not do what I do or anything that resembles what I do for a living. I do not go to trade conventions like broadcasting conventions anymore. I don't define myself by what I do for a living. It's a job. And as far as money is concerned, I have friends who have seen me with money and friends who have seen me dirt poor. And I've had the same friends in some cases for 30 years or more. You can't define yourself by the money. You have to carve out a part of your life that has nothing to do with how much money you have. And you have to think of yourself as have, be, having more worth than just the money. I don't have an education, and I and I understand that, and I, I get it. But to transfer over from, I, I'm, like I said, my lifestyle probably wouldn't change. And I also have had friends for many, many years. I'm 44 years old. Um but the point is, is how do, how do I go without this education from from making whatever to I swear to, I, I can't even I you know I, I I'm not qualified for anything. Well, There's got to be a gr- bunch of people like me, and I I don't know what to do. Well, uh, first of all, you obviously have to cut your lifestyle, if not to the bone, cut it back. Uh, maybe you don't need a gardener. Well. Then, I, then you're afraid that your house is going to, de- you know, it's an. It's a, yes, but you always have you always have the opportunity if you're going to sell a house. You have the opportunity to hire a landscaper, 
uh, to do a one-off uh, right before you're putting the house up for sale. You do not have to have a groundskeeper. And right. you have to look around at your life, and you have to look at the things you could live without. Believe me, there's a lot of things you can live without that you have right now. The other thing is, if your friends are friends, you can tell them about your fears, and you can tell them what's happening to you. Right. If they're your friends. And by the way, if you tell this to someone and they laugh at you or they shun you, guess what? That wasn't a friend anyway. You're right. You're right. But it's I, I, and I and I keep asking the same thing and you're you're answering and I'm sorry I'm not getting it. But I guess where I have to figure something out, I can't afford now to go to a therapist to kind of ask them, how do I get over? And I can't do well, it. understand I'm also so listen. humiliated of. Uh, I don't know. I can't. Let me tell, let I want to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. Okay, that this is the this is the other thing I was going to tell you. There are resources. There is a county mental health department. If you check the blue pages of the phone book, uh, where they provide these services on a sliding scale, which includes going in to see a therapist, or going into a group situation where you're talking with other people who are going through the same problems you are. Where's that again, Tom? Is look in the blue pages of your phone book, and look up under the county medical, you know, the mental health department. Okay. And I'm telling you, there are services available that your tax money over the years that you've done so well, your taxes have paid for that. Yeah. All yeah, right? I, I, I respected that guy that said he's buying a house in 90210. I thought, uh, I my taxes were 225000 every quarter. I mean, it's to, to go from one thing to the complete opposite is, I, I really don't know if our minds are, are set up to handle that kind of thing. Nonsense. I mean, it's unbelievable. Well, again, go use the resources that are available that your tax money paid for all those years you worked so hard. Yeah. And they are there. And I guarantee you there is group therapy. There are groups that are discussing these issues right now. Awesome, Tom. Uh, Tom, I really appreciate it. And, um, and more power to you. And I hope that you keep, uh, you know, having this on the air. And the people that say to take it off the air, um, not not good. <laughs> All right, Rick. Well, thank you, and good luck to you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. How bad is it out there? Nick of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. is a devoted listener, and my son is well, and uh, I'm glad that you had me on the show. Um, I'm 49 years old, and I've had my own business for 35 years in Newport Beach as a contractor, and uh, this recession has started at least two years ago. Uh, I felt it slowly, gradually coming on, and uh, now it's been uh, three or four months since I've even had a job. And I was blessed to get a pool job, and I clean 80 pools a week. And I make zip as for money. What were you doing before you were a pool man? I was a painting contractor, and I do exclusive homes like Kobe Bryant's and uh, quite a quite a big uh, clientele there. And uh, it's just a terrible life now. I mean, I have days I can't even eat. It's uh, it's real bad, and I feel so bad about the guy living in his van because that's how I feel when I'm living in a boat. Wow. So it's uh, and you're not even allowed to do that in Newport Beach. If we get caught, we're really in trouble. So, oh my! Yeah, so it's 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 tough times for all. And uh, I, I I consider this a depression, not a recession. And I've been through recessions, and this is probably the toughest one that I've ever been in. And I I assume that's what the same with most. Yeah. Well, I know it's uh, tougher than uh, 1990. It's tougher than 1981. And it's definitely tougher than 1975. 1975 was the worst I'd ever seen. Yes, it's it's uh, really bad. And I just hope, uh, I pray that something happens in the future that uh, we will have uh, um, an outcome that's going to be much better than this. And I think maybe we can learn from it. I, I'm not sure. But uh, I'm telling you, I've gone through some times that I really don't know how much longer I can take this. 
And uh, I don't even date anymore because I can't afford to go out on a date. And that's pretty embarrassing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mick, uh, good luck to you, and thank you very much for calling in. Hey, well, take me out with a bong toad. All right, Mick, here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number, and we're trying to find out from you how bad things really are. They're pretty bad. Sam on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Sam. Hey, let me tell you, man. You are the real man talking about the real issues, and I love you, and I respect you, and I thank you for doing that. Well, thank you for noticing. Yeah, man, I don't understand how uh, how come some people are so ignorant and they're calling the show and they're acting like nothing going on here in the country. And at the other hand, they can listen. People, they're almost crying over the phone telling you their stories. I mean, if these phone calls don't tell you how bad things are, what will? Yes, sir, I, I agree with you, man. I love you and just keep it up the good work and God bless you and the devil too. Thank you very much. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. This is Lee on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Absolutely unequivocally riveting radio you have going on today. Thank you. Uh, um, I did some research for your listeners. Some of those listeners are boneheads for having their heads in the sands and the blinders on. Same thing uh, Bush had for eight years. Um, they've been tracking this since September. Uh, September job losses for that month was 224,000. October 334. November 476. Uh, January spot or December spiked at 659, and January was 522. And uh, according to that one caller that you had, it was living in his van. If that don't tell the people out there what's going on, nothing will. And at this time, it's not getting any better. And I again, I do believe that sometime in the next year to 18 months, it is going to turn around. At that time, I don't think it's just going to keep going down. Uh, but we're in for a rough ride now. And we all need to pull our bel belts in, and we all need to work a little harder, a little smarter. And we all need to reach out to our friends and family members to make sure they're all okay. Oh, I agree. I agree. And I think he should uh, really call up his parents. And, uh, I mean, that's what they're there for. But uh, even in my neighborhood, I live in an exclusive neighborhood. It's gated. At least 60% of my neighbors have lost their homes. And these are hardworking people that just hit hard times, uh, lost their jobs. And within two or three months, uh, they didn't say, well, like uh, the Lycus rules, but uh, they lost everything. It's just sad. Even at work, I'm in the construction industry management, and uh, people are just ducking under their desks. I mean, when they see a VP walking by, it's, uh, is this going to be the day that, that I lose my job? And uh, the whole office is working their, their tails off trying to find the work, but uh, it's just very slim out there. I've been in the business 27 years, and I have never seen it this bad. I agree with you, Lee, and I thank you for that. Christy on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, love your show. Thank um, you. I just have to say that the whole reason we're in this situation is greed. And when wait, 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 wait. Who's who's greed? I, the the you know top dogs in, in you know Wells Fargo and all these other companies. See, I, I don't agree with that. I'm going to tell you why. I, it, there is greed for sure. Uh, but uh, the greed was not just uh, executives. Greed was the average moron who read Rich Dad Poor Dad and said, "I'm going to buy five houses and flip them." I, I completely agree with that. I mean, I, that's greed, too. Absolutely. And I think that's why we're here. We're, we're here because of greed. And people would say, I have this $3.7 million home, and now I'm, I'm broke and I have no money. Well, that's your fault. You should have been putting money away. I make $150,000 a year. I'm not rich. I live a good life. I put my money away. And now I'm in this place, this recession, and I'm not scared because I put money away, and I can take and tighten my belt and know that I'm okay. And these people who make all this money, who didn't take care of themselves, shouldn't be calling you and crying. What were well, I do believe people should live beneath their means uh, when times are good. And unfortunately, people not only don't live beneath their means, people live beyond their means, figuring that things are going to keep getting better. And then when they don't, they call radio shows and whine. There's no doubt about that. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Tim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. David on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing today? Great. 
Okay, here's my theory on this whole recession. Recession, when you look in the dictionary, it should be called post-greed. I agree with your last caller. Um, what has happened is people have went out and financed toys to go to Glamis and boats to go to Havasu and huge houses and all this. And now that the economy is slowing down, they start complaining and start crying. Here's my theory on the economy. I own a small business. I employ six to eight people at any given time. We haven't slowed down one bit because as soon as I seen that the work was slowing down, I dropped my prices by 20%, and I've actually gained more work than I can keep up with right now. Well, that's, uh, you know, it's a smart business, and I think a lot of people uh, are probably as smart as you. Uh, a lot of people continue to work. If you price your services appropriately to the demand of the marketplace, you should continue to be working. Exactly. That's the thing is, you know, over the past few years, things have been marked up so high because everyone wants to make that million dollars on the one deal. Don't make a million dollars on one deal. Make a dollar on a million deals and keep everything moving. Good points, David. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Carlos on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much, Carlos. Hey, I wanted to comment on, on a sentiment and attitude that I've noticed, like at work, uh, um, you know, last year people uh, I hear my work saying things like, um, when they're working, man, I wish I could be out. It's such a nice day, you know, out playing out on the beach, things like that. And now, you know, I'll, I'll go up to someone and say, hey, how you doing? He's like, well, it's a job, you know, I'm just lucky I have a job, you know. And it, it amazes me how the attitude now, they don't take it for granted, you know, that they do have a job. And I thought it's pretty amazing. I Well, I think you're right. Uh, people should be happy that they have a gal. I'll tell you what, I'm happy I'm standing here right now. Hey, I wanted to ask you another thing, uh, Steve, your thoughts on this. Uh, I have several friends that are servers, and, uh, you know, maybe, you know, it, our economy, our uh, social classes are really splitting up to, like, erasing the middle class because, you know, I have a friend that serves at Cheesecake and business hasn't slowed down at all. I have a friend who's a server at Denny's and he says, you know, his tips are, like, cut in half now, like, not as many people coming through for brunch and things like that. Yeah, I know. Is, Denny's was giving away breakfast that? this week, giving it away. You know, it was a big promotion with the Super Bowl. Anyway, thank you for the call. I got to run here. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Don't forget, every Saturday, 2 to 6 p.m., it's the Tom Likas Show.